Hey everyone, in this video I am going to discuss polynomials. Before we get into this, we need just a few definitions. The first one is a variable. A variable is a letter that's used to represent a number that we may not have information on. X is kind of a fan favorite, but you can also see letters like T, S, Y, etc. The word variable is appropriately chosen because these letters represent numbers that might be subject to change. So depending on the context of the problem that we're looking at, a variable might not have just one value. The next definition we have is something called a constant. Constants are also represented by letters, but these are numbers which are not subject to change. This is why we call them constants. So if I have the letters x and c, where x is a variable and c is a constant, you can think of x as a moving part, where c is a fixed part. Now we're ready to define a polynomial. Let n be a non-negative integer, and let a0, a1, up to an be real numbers. Then the expression below is called a polynomial in one variable x. This definition is very general and looks a little bit weird, but all we have is different powers of x, each power of x being an integer, and each term is accompanied with a real number. We are going to see some examples after the slide, so again, it's still completely okay if this definition seems kind of strange. The fact that this polynomial is in one variable means that it only has one moving part. Even though each x has a different power, it's all the same x. The accompanying a0, a1, up to an are called coefficients. We will be getting to some examples soon, but first we do need to discuss some polynomial anatomy. We do need a lot of words to talk about polynomials, and these are words that instructors and textbooks use very frequently, so it's important that we're familiar with those. We'll use the polynomial below. The first thing to note is that the powers of x are written in descending order. So we start with the biggest power of x first, the second biggest next, and so on and so forth. Sometimes polynomials are not written this way, and that's okay. That doesn't change the definition or anything, but the standard form is just a very conventional way to look at it and look at it easily. The largest power has a name. We call it the degree. In this case, the degree of this polynomial is n. The corresponding coefficient is called the leading coefficient. In our case, the leading coefficient is a sub n. Lastly, we have the constant term. This is a number that does not have a power of x next to it. In our case, that's a sub 0. Now we can start giving some examples. Here, we're going to list a few polynomials and then point out the degree, the leading coefficient, and the constant term of each. The polynomial x squared plus x plus 1 has coefficients 1, 1, and 1, the degree is 2, the leading coefficient is 1, and the constant term is 1. The next polynomial, 5x cubed plus 10x to the fourth minus 12, has degree 4, leading coefficient 10, and constant term 12. Even though the powers of x are not written in descending order, our highest power is 4 in the middle, and that's why 4 is our degree and 10 is our leading coefficient. The next two examples yield the following results. Whenever a polynomial is just a number and has no powers of x, we say it is a polynomial of degree 0. Here we have some non-examples of polynomials. The first one has a non-integer power, therefore it is not a polynomial. The second one has a power of x in the denominator, and that does not meet the definition of a polynomial. Now we're going to try something different. It's called evaluating polynomials at a particular value. This means that we are going to replace our variable x with a specific number. Let p of x be the polynomial 5x squared plus 2, and let q of x be the polynomial 7 minus 3x plus x squared. The first problem I'll tackle is evaluating p of 2. This means that in the polynomial p of x, everywhere I see the letter x, I will replace it with the number 2, like so. Following the order of operations, I get 22 as an answer. Next, I will evaluate q of 2. So the game hasn't changed. Everywhere I see an x in the polynomial q of x, I just replace it with a 2. Doing this gives 7 minus 3 times 2 plus 2 squared. Again, following the order of operations, we end up with an answer of 5. To make things more interesting, let's start evaluating at negative numbers. For instance, let's compute p of negative 1. Notice that upstairs I was using a lot of parentheses. This is going to be very useful when you're dealing with negatives, because then you can keep track of signs. Plugging in gives me 5 times negative 1 squared plus 2. 
Following through, I get an answer of 7. It is very important to pay attention to signs here, because if you start dropping negatives, you will get incorrect answers. So use parentheses in the order of operations very carefully. In our last example, we'll compute q of negative 1. Here we get 7 minus 3 times negative 1 plus negative 1 squared, which simplifies to 11. To see more about polynomials, look at the next two videos, Polynomial Addition and Multiplication Parts 1 and 2.